Hello friends, in this video we will discuss about integrated stress response. There is no any ideal conditions that will always support cellular fitness and growth. In fact, in many cases these are challenged by several environmental or intracellular stresses. The cells try to defend these stresses up to bearable limit by eliciting several intracellular signaling pathways known as cellular stress responses and in doing so they will try to preserve the cellular integrity or homeostasis and the conversion point or common approach to study these cellular stress responses is integrated stress response. The stressors may be any extracellular or intracellular milieu that are at least supportive for the cellular growth or even challenge their fitness. These may be changes in the crucial factors like pH, nutrient availability, temperature, osmolarity or any pathogenic invasion or toxic accumulation of reactive oxygen species, nitrogen species and misfolded or unfolded proteins or any unrepaired DNA damage or dysregulation in programmed cell death. So these stressors will trigger the specific pro-survival strategies in the form of stress responses and these are aimed for minimal damage to the cells or speedy recovery from the cellular in cells. So these stress responses can be assumed as integral part of normal physiology to retain the cellular homeostasis. There may be multiple stressors or cellular in cells which can be mainly listed as ER stress, endoplasmic reticulum stress, oxidative stress, hypoxia, DNA damage, nutrient stress and heat shock. In a response to these stressors, the cellular stress response mediators will be triggered which will execute or carry out adaptive measures to bring back cellular homeostasis and ensure cell survival. In fact, there occurs specificity in how adaptive responses will be executed for each stress. For example, endoplasmic reticulum stress which occurs due to excessive accumulation of unfolded or misfolded proteins. In a response to these, the mediators like UPR sensors, these may be PARC, ATF6 or IRE1 will be expressed and this will execute the adaptive measures like translation attenuation to suppress the protein synthesis, irate mechanisms or ex an expression of the molecular chaperones to enhance the protein folding mechanism. Similarly, in oxidative stress which occurs due to accumulation of reactive oxygen species or nitrogen species, the antioxidants will be generated which will try to bring back a redox homeostasis and so on it's, it occurs in other stress response conditions also. So these cellular stress response will be trying to safeguard the cellular integrity however it is possible only up to certain bearable limit. When it cross that bearable limit or say when there is persistent existence of these deleterious stimuli or in chronic stress conditions, the death signaling pathways will be triggered or executed and it is intended to lead the stress cells to the apoptosis. It's to get rid of those stress or dead cells to preserve the other remaining cells from the delays in cells. When we are saying that there is specificity in how adaptive response to each stressful conditions occurs, there is also a convergent point to view all these responses. The integrated stress response or ISR is a holistic approach to address all these stress responses. The key regulatory event here is phosphorylation of eukaryotic initiation factor 2 alpha subunit. It leads to suppression of global protein synthesis and enhancement of transcription factor ATF4 expression. 
in a normal regulation of translation initiation there is the eif2 having three subunits alpha beta gamma it will form complex with gtp guanosine triphosphate eif2 gtp complex binds with initiator trna with which will in turn bind with 40s ribosomal subunit forming pre initiation complex it binds with 60s ribosomal subunit to form complete initiation complex it will recognize the start codon auz and starts the translation in initiation process there is the release of subunits like eif5 and eif2 G, gdp complex this eif2 gdp has to be converted to eif2 gtp which will be done by guanine nucleotide exchange factor eif2b standing for eukaryotic initiation factor subunit beta when phosphorylation of the alpha subunit of eif2 occurs it will inhibits the action of eif2b which will inhibits the translation initiation and suppress the protein protein synthesis as we said the phosphorylation of eif2 alpha subunit is the key event in isr in mammalian isr there are mainly four serine threonine kinases that will execute this phosphorylation at serine 51 position of eif2 alpha subunit and each of these kinases are activated at specific stressful conditions for example gcn2 is activated due to amino acid deprivation perc in case of er stress pkr kinase in case of foreign rna or dna in viral infection hri kinase due to hem deprivation and the phosphorylation executed by these kinases will lead to suppression of protein synthesis and increased expression of transcription factor atf4 which will again increase the expression of stress responsive genes like chop and get 34 subsequently it leads to the adaptive responses like decreased protein overload in endoplasmic reticulum decreased energy consumption it also decreases the cytokine productions and there is a decreased risk of inflammation associated organ damage moreover there is increased expression of survival genes against hypoxia and similar to other limitation cellular stress responses the isr also functions up to certain variable limits and whether it will leads to cell recovery or cell death is defined by intensity and duration of the stressors for cell recovery successful termination of integrated stress response is essential when there is no longer existence of the cellular insults and for termination of isr the phosphorylated form of eif2 alpha should again come to the dephosphorylated form this dephosphorylation is brought by the complex of phosphatases like get 34 and pp1 protein phosphatase 1 the dephosphorylated form of eif2 alpha will then activates the guanine nucleotide exchange factor eif2b then there occurs the translation initiation and protein synthesis can re, can be restored and which will restore the normal cell functioning here the isr is not exclusive to other specific cellular stress responses in fact isr can establish the cross talk with other pro survival pathways like upr pa3 signaling the enhancement mechanism isr ETC. pathway has been approached for several therapeutics we can very briefly exemplify here with respect to cns injuries cns injuries is a broad aspect consisting traumatic brain injury spinal cord injury brain stroke etc it leads to disruption of barriers like blood brain barrier blood cerebrospinal fluid barriers it will leads to extravasation of blood substances and cells into cns parenchyma it will further leads to subsequent detrimental consequences like oxygen deprivation 
excessive cytokine production, amino acid deprivation, etc. So it will leads to enhanced ISR pathway as cytoprotective mechanism. So here, when we can use the small molecule activators of ISR, it will further boost off this cytoprotective effects. For example, salubrinol has been used, which is a small molecule activator of ISR. It maintains the AF2 alpha in phosphorylated form and inhibits the activity of GAT34 PP1 and CREP PP1 activity. So it inhibits the activity of these phosphatases. Guana Benz is a small molecule activator which is also prescribed a drug against hypertension and it also inhibits the AIF2 alpha dephosphorylation by GAT34 PP1 complex. So similar is the effect by guana benz derivative called cephin 1. I hope this is helpful for you friends. Thanks for watching.